New Order emerged from the ashes of Joy Division following the tragic suicide of lead singer Ian Curtis, who along with main members Bernard Sumner, Peter Hook, and Stephen Morris cemented the group's influence on the post-punk genre and music world. Despite only releasing two studio albums, their status remains strong to this day, having inspired countless works of art that followed. In 2007, Curtis's story was adapted into a biopic titled Control. The film is a brilliant foray into the world of Joy Division, serving as a transition for those wishing to dive deeper into New Order's wide breadth of work. This is somewhat of a continuation of my Talking Heads video on the groundbreaking concert film Stop Making Sense, also directed by Jonathan Demme, so be sure to watch that before or after this. As I stated before, both bands are among my favorites of all time, with New Order's longevity and versatility proving to be a testament to their talent. While I'll only be covering Demi's video here, the band has a plethora of outstanding music videos, a few of which I will highlight here. Round and Round is from their 1989 album Technique, and there's nothing quite like the song in its visuals, which is somewhat akin to Krzysztof Kieslowski's 1980 short film Talking Heads, no reference intended, but without the talking itself. World in Motion is my favorite football-related song, featuring the 1990 England national team for the World Cup, as well as a catchy rap from Liverpool legend John Barnes. It's whimsical and just a ton of fun. Crystal is from their 2001 album Get Ready and inspired what would be the killers in the formation of their name, also working to establish a relationship between New Order and their lead singer Brandon Flowers in the process. This song is one of the best of their post 2000s era. Their most recent LP, Music Complete, was released in 2015. It is the only New Order album released so far following the departure of Peter Hook in 2007. In my opinion, it has some of the best work the band has done, Tutti Frutti and Restless in particular, even more so in their extended forms, share a sort of kindred structure to the perfect kiss in their build-up and eventual emotional catharsis. New Order continued on the widespread success of its predecessor with the release of their debut album in 1981, Movement. While the group's post-punk roots remained intact in this work, they began to venture into a wide array of different genres like new wave, synth pop, and electronic rock. This shift completed itself with the groundbreaking release of their 1983 LP, Power, Corruption, and Lies. The record features heavy use of synthesizers, marking the group's esoteric sense of exploration, foreshadowing the reliable blueprint that the band would follow for many years to come. By the end of the early 80s, Bernard Sumner's restrained yet poignant vocal style allowed him to fully flourish in his new lead role, with keyboardist Gillian Gilbert also making her mark 
due to her outstanding production skills. Still going strong to this day, the band's most recent live performance at Alexandra Palace features a combination of classics and songs from Music Complete being the most recent addition to their spectacular concert catalog. Fast forward one year later to 1984. American filmmaker Jonathan Demme's Stop Making Sense was released to wide acclaim. His close collaboration with Talking Heads broke new ground, cementing its place among giants like Martin Scorsese's The Last Waltz, Michael Wadley's Woodstock, and D.A. Pennebaker's Monterey Pop. By then, New Order had just finished the recording of their third studio album, Low Life, a fusion of illustrious sweeping sound, blending instrumentation and wordplay, or its absence, seamlessly. On May 13, 1985, the record was released and its second track, The Perfect Kiss, became the group's first single to coincide with its full album release. Demi decided to direct the video, deviating far from the frenetic and fast-paced style of the direction of Stop Making Sense, instead building a structure to support the co-mingling of both audio and visual. New Order holds a special place in my heart, and I attribute them to the many reasons why I love music to the capacity I do today. The Perfect Kiss is easily one of my personal favorites from their discography, and displays what I believe to be a perfect amalgamation of the power of their distinct sound. The vinyl edition of Low Life features a shorter edit of the song that runs slightly under 5 minutes, leaving out both the third verse and emphatic climax. Substance, a compilation released in 1987, features the full, nearly 9 minute version released on the single. Another 8 minute and 2 second version is also present on both the new and old copies of Substance's CDs, with 44 seconds having to be edited out due to limited space on the disc. Although their capacity increased years later, the change was never made. While the shorter versions are still spectacular in their own right, the respective experiences are very different from that of the full, live version presented and performed in the video. While Stop Making Sense's endless energy left audiences jumping up and down off of their seats, the Perfect Kisses music video takes quite a simple approach in its execution. No stage needs to be manipulated, there is no audience to entertain, and there are no background performers. As Gilbert fades into the frame, we are introduced to the band's members. The framing of each close-up is identical, their faces showing no indication of anything or anyone else in the room other than themselves camera movement non-existent. The beat begins to play. The simplicity of the video lies within its multi-layered formation, mirroring how the song begins in its ascent. Each member of the band is integral to the composition's construction, and so are their instruments, while Gilbert, Sumner, Morris, and Hook are all introduced in nearly identical fashion, the instruments aren't introduced in the same manner, but instead in an alternating sequence. At first, Gilbert's keyboard and machinery are nowhere to be seen, but Sumner's lone microphone appears. The same goes for Morris, while Hook's guitar pick stays firmly clenched in his mouth. Each layer begins to increase in intensity, synchronizing with each other. Hook's prominent bass begins to make itself known, his fingers intricately crafting a vibrant soundscape. The extra shots of Gilbert aim to make her position known. Her temporal control becomes the crux of the performance. On the surface, there isn't anything necessarily dynamic about how the performance itself is structured, it isn't trying to make a statement through its direction. It's simply a portrayal of artists doing what they do best. Glamorization is nowhere to be seen, a cinema verite sense of realism comes to fruition. A few minor mistakes slip through, but the show must go on. This is a raw musical performance that highlights the intensity of the artist's process. New Order skeptics perhaps may fail to see the appeal of Bernard Sumner as a vocalist, since they would say he doesn't have the range of someone like a Freddie Mercury. But ask any fan, including myself, if any other vocalist could replace him, and the answer would be a resounding no. 
Sumner's emotion shines through above all else, and the naturalistic style of his singing only complements the streamlined nature of the song. I love how his eyes are closed whenever he's singing, signaling the emphasis he places on the words, not the person singing them. Lyrically straightforward, the meaning presented in the song is still unknown to even Sumner himself, as stated in an interview with GQ. Words make way for instrumentation and vice versa. This writing from Billboard's Andrew Unterberger particularly resonates with the meaning of the work as a whole. What all of this serves to do, though, is to make the band seem profoundly human. Brilliance is born out of error, as reinforced by the human experience. This certainly makes itself clear, as Demi's cinematographer for the video, Henri Alekan, shot two of the best films of all time with humanistic philosophies, Vim Vendors' Wings of Desire and William Wyler's Roman Holiday. His propensity to showcase the aforementioned is nothing short of breathtaking and presents itself through an unfiltered lens. As the music increases in both volume and tempo, so does the pace of the editing. Cuts become quicker and angles change ever so slightly. Hook begins to play on his pick and by the second verse all of the layers blend into an atmospheric burst of pure emotion. The ascent is over. Every single component or note played individually still contains its role as demonstrated by the listener's memory. More instruments continue to sprout. A cowbell, thunderous percussion strikes, sound and body intertwine. The halfway point of the video marks the first use of an establishing shot, four lights shine in conjunction with the four members of the band. Although it appears only for a brief moment, its purpose and place are powerful, representing artists at the height of their powers, simultaneously collaborating in a space seemingly unconstrained by any external force. Darkness briefly shrouds the side of the room, then the regular structure resumes. I absolutely love the frog sampling, as it reminds the listener of the possibility of anything integrating itself into the ever-growing wall of sound. The trust that each member has in one another is unequivocal. Two separate lone figures inhabit the exterior space alongside an unmissable Joy Division poster in the background. Past and present meet each other yet again. Curtis's absence is noted silently but with strength. This can be attributed to the many possible meanings within the cryptic lyrics, or simply just an acknowledgement of the importance of their prior work. We reach the height of the sound, with the pieces of the puzzle working to form a complete picture. While the ascent is calculated and elongated to exhibit the purpose of the building blocks of the song, the descent occurs in a much quicker fashion. The sound fades away almost instantaneously, and soon only Gilbert's keyboard and hook's bass remain. The car crash signals the end. 
There's a calming energy that permeates through the frame as we take a look at each member one last time in silence. The technical features are as simple as the portrayal of the act, conveying a simple message. The truth is paramount. Demi successfully blurs the line between a traditional music video and live performance, and by doing so, crafts a wholly unique experience. The video breaks new ground implicitly, displaying a creative eye for musical filmmaking spearheaded by innovation. Although many versions of The Perfect Kiss exist, what I find most special about Demi's version is that it completely disregards the common differentiation so often utilized in popular music videos. Official music videos today often start or end with a spectacle of visual splendor to guide the listener into having the best impression of the fine-tuned studio version of the song. Music videos today also have equal importance to the songs themselves due to media's heavy saturation caused by the digital age, with viewers oftentimes watching the videos instead of streaming the songs, even less so purchasing them physically. In this case, a one-of-a-kind live recording that embraces the imperfections of performing on the spot evolves into the best representation of that song in the process. Knowing when to enhance a performance as opposed to letting realism guide the film, this is Demi working at his best. While I appreciate visual beauty in music videos as much as anyone else, there's something special contained within the simplicity of this project, an unspoken reverence between artists behind vastly disparate crafts. The power of collaboration and integrity reminds us of the boundless capacity for art's ability to shape our lives. What are your thoughts on The Perfect Kiss or anything New Order related? Be sure to let me know down below. If you'd like to see more cinema related content in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon for your continued kindness. Keep going one day at a time, inch by inch. Thank you for watching.